Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. We're continuing our conversation with Christina. Just had a powerful uh, conversation with her. Uh, we've had three programs already just talking about her life or she grew up in church like a lot of people, but we're going to have a personal relationship with God. Just did it because that's what her parents did, her grandparents did. Uh, had a relationship break up, really got hurt, uh, got into an unhealthy relationship, then wound up going through several losses of family members, really grieving and out of that pain, married somebody just on a whim. She'd been dating him quite a while, but still just uh, wasn't probably the wisest decision and a lot of us have been there and so she uh winds up sharing about that and then uh, unfortunately is almost killed in a car wreck but avoids that god protected her then she went to counseling uh, some christian counseling dealt with her grief and then tried to get her marriage saved but her uh, husband was unwilling to do any counseling anything to save the marriage so they went through a divorce then um, she goes through a divorce recovery program and uh, learned a lot, dealt with the grief, uh, finished, continued dealing with the grief. Uh, one of the things that we didn't talk in detail about, but she also uh, gained a community during that divorce recovery. And, man, we need a community of people that can kind of relate to some of the pain in our life, don't we, Christine? Yeah, it's a community I still keep. Before I was going to come on this program, I had them praying for my testimony and uh, going to a basketball game with, uh, with one tonight. Night. So that who's um, who's remarried uh, to a good Christian man and so happy. Um, so yeah, it's not just a community. Then it's a community you can can keep. Absolutely, yeah, not just for 13 weeks, but, and so then she also shared that uh, she wanted up having uh, a guy that she knew uh, that asked her out while she was in the middle of this recovery program, but she just said a four-letter word, and no, she didn't curse him, okay, but she said, uh, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that, and I would like to at some time, but right now, I just need you to please wait, W-A-I-T, wait, and uh, a lot of guys, uh, me included, don't like to wait, but I'm so thankful that Christina stuck to her guns, and the reason was because you didn't want to hurt anybody again, is right. that right? Yeah, because I was still dealing with my hurt, so I didn't want to hurt anyone else. So he waited patiently for that. Then uh, they still did some things together in groups. So it wasn't like she didn't see him at all, but got to know people in a group. And I want to encourage you. That's a great way to meet people in group settings. I remember one time uh, several years ago, there was a girl I was interested in and a lady. And we went out as a group after church. And she wound up getting a hair in her salad. And you would have thought that the world had ended. I mean, she went ballistic. And I thought, oh, my gosh, here's this sweet lady that I knew. And I thought, uh, you know, if she gets that upset over that, and I know that that's, you know, obviously a gross thing and all that. But at the same time, I thought, what's going to happen like if I wreck the car yeah, or something? You know, take out the trash. <laughs> yeah, I don't take the trash out. <laughs> what's going to happen exactly, Christina? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, when you go out with people in groups, you learn things about them. Then she winded up sharing also after that, and she completed the divorce recovery. They only went out a couple times a month. First, I thought, I said, two times a week? She said, no, two, twice a month. So she really is practicing this weight thing because of the definition in Sandy's when you want to uh, – want things to be different but you keep doing things the same way and we have that false expectation so she honored he honored that so he waited some more and then when we ended things yesterday she talked about that she wanted to go on a trip uh, and spend some time with God herself and I've done that before I went on a cruise to Alaska so she's not weird and it was one of the best vacations I ever went on because me and God did a lot of conversation I did a lot of journaling so tell us about that time with God that you yeah, spent. Uh, I didn't want to officially be in a relationship until I knew I could stand on my own and so I went to New York City in winter time and skated in front of Rockefeller Center and did everything by myself which you know this new york city is probably a weird place to go by yourself but <laughs> i really connected with god and just prayed a lot about like is this the the man you want me to move forward with before things become more serious and um and i i felt absolutely yes and so when i got back i was expecting yeah we're gonna start we're gonna become official immediately and he and then I waited <laughs> for for him to officially ask me because he he knew everything about me and knew uh, everything that had happened. So he he also had now that he knew I was ready, he had to pray about it and make sure it was right for him too. So um, 
So then the um, relationship became official, and a few uh, months later, we rededicated our lives and were baptized in a pond together uh, with our families there. And um, we the relationship progressed uh, more and more, and we finally started talking about our desire to get married. And we decided to attend premarital counseling, but we did it before we got engaged, and just because of my history and and his thinking before that he would never get married he just thought that marriage wasn't for him we wanted to make sure that it was the right thing for us so in our eyes a marriage proposal was final and so we didn't want to get engaged until we knew that this was god's plan for us to share the rest of our lives together so we got uh, set up for a pre-marriage counseling program we thought well if this is right for us well uh, we might get engaged within the next year and that was not god's plan at all we went through the premarital counseling we took it very seriously we did our homework we would go out to eat after the counseling sessions and talk about what we thought about the uh, the criteria and we um it was uh, just a really moving experience and we ended up getting engaged a couple of months after that we finished the premarital counseling program and then we would decide and we decided we were going to get married that same year which was just about five months later so we had got engaged and we set a date and uh, so things moved much faster <laughs> than we thought but but there was a lot of waiting that went in before that on oh your yeah i waited before that but things went much faster with the engagement to marriage than we thought but i love though what you said you know after you know you had shared all your luggage okay uh you know baggage your mistakes your hurts whatever um he still accepted you but he knew that on the front end you knew about him he was up front that i don't know if you know i ever thought i would get married and yet then he wanted to go and pray and spend time god and with god and as you guys both waited god clearly showed you both that you were supposed to be in the relationship but because you took it so seriously and if you're in a you know a serious relationship there's nothing wrong with going and uh, doing a premarital uh, counseling okay with that find out save yourself a lot of heartache and yeah, pain i recommend that uh, very much doing it before you ever were to get engaged um, that way you don't have the distraction of the wedding planning mm -hmm. going on with you because we would we would see people in class that were already engaged and their wedding dates already set so then you have that pressure of well we don't want to call off this wedding we've already spent all of this money and um, oh, and then sitting doodling wedding plans when you mm. you know wow that's a great point listening going on so it just completely removes that distraction um, All right. Well, I know that's a word for somebody that's in a fairly seriously serious relationship. You may not have the ring yet, but uh, those things are available a lot of different churches. So I encourage you to look into that. So, so you went through that. God definitely said, "Hey, you guys are going to be together. I want you to be married." So um, you got married, and then unfortunately, uh, once again, I heard Wayne Smith say one time, uh, "God had only one son without sin, no son or daughter without sorrow." And so, unfortunately, sorrow kind of knocked at your heart again. Yeah, and so the time was pretty crazy. We got engaged, and we set a date uh, for our marriage. And um, exactly one week after we got engaged, we tragically lost my dad in an ATV accident. And I was very much a, a daddy's girl, and um, so grief just had struck again. And I uh, was completely devastated but so this was the worst grief i'd ever faced but this time it was different because i was able to face it with god and um so i knew what had happened to me before that i didn't deal with grief and then became a hurt person that hurt people and so i, re I resumed counseling uh got set up with a, a professional counselor this time but uh, my church helped to uh, cover some of that cost and um and and then i continued on after because it was so helpful and then i attended a, a grief share program that ended just a week before our wedding uh because i wanted to make sure i went through the grieving process and not around it we had a very small wedding didn't have any attendance maybe 100 people I bought my dress at a, a, a department store and just really remembered the words of my dad and and tried to um to honor him his wise advice of 
we need to focus on the marriage and not on the wedding and so we had a a, a book we did um saving your marriage before it starts we did that together before uh, the wedding and um and god gave me a, a lot of strength to um to get through that day to walk down the aisle without my dad and um and i was glad that we got my dad's permission before that meant a lot to me that i knew that that he approved and uh, because he didn't really have a say in the first time we sprung it on him um but um but I'm happy to report that I've, I did marry the man that, that stuck by me through losing my father and, and was very supportive of making sure I did keep turning things over to God with it and uh, tried to help keep me from be He was God's person on earth that helped huh. keep me moving. Um, and so I, I just uh, felt like I had done so much wrong in my first marriage that I couldn't be forgiven and didn't deserve um, a, a second chance at marriage. But God used the counseling and the divorce recovery to show me otherwise. Like you said, God hates divorce, but he doesn't hate divorced people. So I've been forgiven. And um, I've told you before that I believed in God because I was taught to do so but now I believe because I saw how he brought me back from the dead mm. um, and so I went through uh, grief with uh, without him and with him and I don't know how I made it the first time without him and I'm still I mean that my dad didn't die too long ago so I'm still he's carrying me through the process every day it's um, such a journey and using my husband to help me through that um and then i also saw what marriage is like without and with god mm. and and now I, I see what marriage is really intended to be like when you respect your husband and he loves you in return and um and so that's the main thing is just i, I i'm praying that my story will give somebody else that same hope that now lives in me that you're not done after mm. you get divorced and um, you know, especially me like I got divorced for I didn't get divorced for biblical reasons there uh, there's forgiveness out there which I have received with open arms and I'm grateful for every day and and I'm now married to this man that I don't deserve but I'm grateful every day for that God chose him for me so. well I'm sure uh, he feels the same way about you and you know the thing I want to remind you if you hadn't heard the other programs is that she went to counseling and she tried to get her first marriage her husband her former spouse to uh, go to uh, counseling several times and he wouldn't do it he wasn't willing to work on it and yeah. uh, had some addiction issues and so anyway so uh, you know don't think that she just walked out it was no big deal you know there was a lot of prayer thought and efforts made but unfortunately uh, at the end of the day uh, the other partner the other spouse was not willing to make that effort but here's the deal maybe you were the one that you know whatever you've been through divorce we just the big thing i want you to know is god loves you not where you could be not where you should be but exactly where you are and that the ground is level at the foot of the cross and that jesus will help heal your broken heart any closing thing that you want to share christina just uh deal with your junk and your hurt as you go don't uh, don't suppress it because it's going to come to a head at some point and it'll be worse because it's had a lot of build up. So, um, and don't be mad at, try not to be mad at God. It's okay if you are, but really focus on that. It's the fallen world that's caused your pain. Absolutely. We live in a world where the enemy comes to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full and uh, trust Jesus with those hurts. He doesn't cause them. That is the enemy. Well, that's going to be it for Hope is Here. If you missed any of these other programs, please go check out our website. Christina had a powerful story to share. You can find all those at hopeishere.today.